Can a phone really compete with a DSLR for astrophotography? Let's find out. Since starting this channel, a number of people have contacted me and said, Shane, do I really need to take my DSLR camping and when I go away anymore, now that I can take these awesome photos with my phone? Well, the answer is maybe. But if you're on this channel, you're looking at things like astrophotography or low light photography. So today, what we're gonna test is the Google Pixel 4a up against a Canon full frame astrophotography camera. G'day guys, Shane Austin here, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, everything I talk about here today is in the description down below. And if you're new here, I do two videos each and every week all about small center photography. So if you're into that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll see what I do each and every week. If you have subscribed, you're a bloody legend. Today what we're doing is we're putting up the Google Pixel 4a to my Canon 5D Mark III with a very fast, nice astrophotography lens on it. How are we gonna do it? Well. We're gonna go out early in the morning tomorrow morning, see if we can capture the tail of the Milky Way, or the tip of the Milky Way. Tip, tail, not, the core's not quite there yet, but it's good enough for this test. And uh, we're gonna pack up this camera, this phone, and see which one comes out on top. So the camera that I'm testing this against today is pretty much my workhorse camera. I use this for weddings, corporate work, and obviously to take astro photos with. I've taken all these photos right here with this phone. This one here is a little bit older, there's obviously the 5D Mark IV out now, but to be honest with the work that I do, I couldn't justify spending the money to upgrade the camera when it's doing a bloody good job as it is. So what we're using is the camera, we're using a Samyang 24mm uh, f2.8 lens. It's a fully manual lens, so you've got to do everything manually on this lens, the aperture and the, uh, the focusing. It's a little bit of a fisheye lens and well, I just find it really good for astrophotography. So on top of the camera, I've rigged up a hot shoe mount for with a phone holder, and it's going to hold onto the Google Pixel 4a. And we're going to take exactly the same photo at the same time of night with both of these cameras. So it's about 3 a.m. I'm looking for the tail of the galactic core, the tail of the Milky Way, if you like. Milky Way season doesn't start for another, probably another month but um, we can start to see the tail early in the morning. So we're gonna try and photograph that. So it's pretty windy, hopefully you can hear me. I'm just gonna set up firstly the, uh, the cannon. I'll turn this sucker on and we'll go into the menu. I'll flip that around so you can see it. This is how I've got it set up at the moment. Um, 25 seconds, the lens that's on this the Samyang lens, that's a fully manual lens, so we don't need to adjust any of the aperture um, or we adjust the, the focusing manually as well. We'll set up ISO 3200, we'll put a two second delay on it. That's it, we're good to go. We'll hit the shutter and move this light out of the way because the sensor on the Canon is so sensitive is that any light from this is definitely gonna pick it, get picked up by the Canon. So we'll give it a second, 25 of those in fact, and we'll come back and have a look at the photo. All right, let's have a look at this photo. And hopefully you can see that. If not, I'll put it on the screen for you. But uh, that's pretty bloody good. We'll try the pixel now and we'll see what we can get. Go into the camera. It's dark enough, it'll say try night sight. Let's try night sight. It's certainly dark enough for Astro. Maybe this light on the, yeah, the light on the video was actually giving us a bit of issue there. I'll touch on the star for focus. It's only taking a night side photo. Looks like the light from this, what I'm talking with you guys at, is making it too bright. So I'll turn this off and I'll start that photo again. The biggest downside of the pixel is just how bloody long it takes. Four minutes is a long time. It does a really good job though. No one can argue that, but four minutes, fair dinkum. I've just taken a photo with the Canon while it's taking a photo with the Pixel. I've even just set up this GoPro, put on a post with the JB tripod and took this photo. And I'm sitting here talking to you guys right now and that sucker is still taking its photo. And it's got, <clears throat> still got a minute and five seconds to go. <laughs> so I'll come back to you again in a minute. All right, that's done. Four minutes and six seconds. Let's go and have a look at the photo. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. Have a look. Let's compare it to the Canon photo. And I've got to tell you that on the back of the cameras at least, they don't look too bad. They're both raw. One's a lot longer, one's a stacked image. One's, um, well, she's pretty expensive. It's a little bit older now, but it's certainly expensive. It always takes good photos. And one's a $350 phone. Let's put these on the computer and have a quick look and see what I think of them. Well, that's certainly interesting. Here are the two photos. I've just edited both of them on Lightroom. I'm not going to go through the editing process. I'll link at the top to other videos where I've done exactly that. But uh, I'm gonna be honest and say, I don't think you need to take your DSLR camera if you're gonna take this sort of photo. The Pixel does it incredibly well. You don't need to take a tripod, shutter release, all that sort of business. You just take your phone, little Joby tripod will do it just fine. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you on Friday. Catch you later.